James Byron Dean. Also known as Jimmy Dean, James Dean. Born in February 8th in 1931, Marion, Indiana, USA. Actor since the 1950s, unfortunately, he started acting in 1955 when he died tragically by a car accident in September 30th, 1955, with only 24 years of age in Chalamet, California, USA. James Dean went to Santa Monica College and UCLA, the very famous UCLA. And he's buried now in Park Cemetery, Fairmount, Indiana, his hometown. USA. Let's take a look at some of the more interesting facts behind James Dean life and his career. Nothing to fear, Chris Rea, for you now. My name is Silvia dos Santos, and the podcast for today is about the legendary... James Dean. I feel your heat and dusty whispers. The wind is cold around your moon. It's getting hard to keep our distance. I know your time is coming soon. Don't point your dream on my horizon. Don't take your rose too far from home Please don't forget we're not each other Each soul has black thorns of his own I see you dancing Your song is clear You got to show me Got to show me There's nothing to fear Nothing to fear My loved ones, you have yours So let us gaze upon the face In God's own name, let's eat together In God's own name, please come in peace See how our children play together While you and me, we stand alone I know we'll never be each other If I 
just three major feature films before his untimely death after a car accident, a tragic car accident, at age 24 in 1955. James Dean has endured, as a legend, as a true legend. The actor who was born on February 8th, 1931, was known for his performances. That utilized the immersive method acting technique. And though it's been nearly 65 years since his passing, Dean continues to be the barometer for both effortless, cool, committed performing. I invite you all to take a good look of some of the most interesting facts behind his amazing short, short life. Unfortunately, he's a, a short life and career. He is one of my favorite actors. I've watched his movies over and over again. And on my um, front page of the website, sylviaposts.weebly.com, that you all know, or else you wouldn't be listening to the podcast, It's, um, there is a, a documentary about him that you'll find most interesting to watch. I urge you all to watch that documentary and others available online documentaries, of course, about James Dean. Let's carry on with some of the facts about James Dean. The cool, cool James Dean. His first professional acting job was for a, guess what, a Pepsi commercial. Yeah, Pepsi. His first job was for Pepsi commercial. Back to the bone, ZZ Top. And they gazed in wide wonder at the joy they had found. The head nurse spoke up, said, Leave this one alone. She could tell right away that I was bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. I broke a thousand hearts before I met you. I break a thousand more, baby.
woman beg And I make a good woman steal I make an old woman blush And I make a young girl squeal I wanna be yours, pretty baby Yours and yours alone I'm here to tell you, honey That I'm bad to the bone Bad 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 face and the girls oh the girls were all mad about him he was born in Marion Indiana to Winston Dean a dentist and Mildred Wilson when James Dean was just nine years old Mildred his mother passed away from cancer, so Winston sent James Dean to live with his aunt and uncle near rural, rural area, Fairmount, Indiana, where he grew up on a Quaker farm and was a standout high school athlete. Upon graduating from high school, he... Um, You know, from upon graduating from high school in 1949, Dean hopped a bus to California in order to pursue acting while attending Santa Monica City College. But his first role was likely not up to the level of his talents. Dean was cast as a part of an ensemble for a Pepsi commercial and seen dancing and singing around jukebox. He was paid a lot of money for that age. <laughs> He also worked as a parking lot attendant. Oh yeah. And was a stunt tester for a game show. I'll tell you all about these two experiences in his life. After this song, Linear Skinnyard a simple man I believe he was just a simple man with many dreams who was cut short very
from Santa Monica City College to the University of California, Los Angeles, where he majored in theater. But soon dropped out. He then scored a series of minor roles in features, including 1952's Sailor Beware, a Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis comedy, despite these breaks, Dean was still short on cash and worked as a parking lot attendant for CBS Studios until he moved to New York City in 1951 to study food performing, to study performing under famed acting coach Lee Strasberg. After moving to New York, Dean was still in need of a steady paycheck He became a sun tester for the game show Beat the Clock on TV in which contestants were given tasks to complete in a given period of time. Producers needed to be sure that tasks were practical, so Dean was among those who tested them prior to airtime. Unfortunately for Dean, He completed them rapidly, which gave the show little idea of how a more average guest might fare. He was, indeed, fired from his job as a stunt tester. Poor James Dean. He didn't have any luck. James Dean earned his first fan club with a television movie. When in 1951, Dean appeared as John the Apostle in Family Theater. An anthology television series that was presenting Hill Number One, a story of faith and inspiration. Despite being years away from major stardom, his presence so captivated the teen Catholic school girls, of course, the girls, at Immaculate Heart in Los Angeles that they formed the Immaculate Heart James Dean Appreciation Society, one of the dozens of fan clubs that would spring up in Dean's name in the years to come. He would also go on to make 20 different television appearances before being cast in 1950s East of Eden, more precisely 1955. The movie East of Eden is one of my ultimate favorites. James Dean didn't always bother to learn his lines. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. So, with East of Eden, the adaptation of the John Steinbeck novel, Dean came into his own as a screen performer. But according to co-star Raymond Massey, Dean's method approach could often complicate things for his fellow actors because he didn't follow the script. You know what? He was a simple man, but he was a rebel. <laughs> James Dean, you're listening to Other Side, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I thought that I've been brought up the path. Once you know you can never go back, I gotta take it on the other side. A century that what it meant to me. A cemetery.
was nominated for two Academy Awards, both posthumously. Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David's show on TV in the 90s, one of my favorites. I guess I'm obsessed with Jerry Seinfeld's show, um, Seinfeld, called Seinfeld. Uh, to all of you that know Seinfeld, this story is very curious indeed. Liz Sheridan, the actress who played Jerry Seinfeld's mother on screen on the TV show Seinfeld. She portrayed um, Helen Seinfeld. She claims um, she wrote a, uh, a book, a memoir, if you, if you need to call that, a memoir book um, in 2000. Um, called Dizzy and Jimmy, My Life with James Dean, unquote. Uh, a memoir about her, um, Liz Sheridan, of course, year-long relationship with the actor while the two were living in New York in the 1950s. So Liz Sheridan was Helen Seinfeld. What a curious uh, fact. Um, so he had, uh, I must, uh, talk about this before carrying on to another fact. He had a numerous, um, girlfriend, a list of girlfriends, many, many girlfriends. I guess in my humble opinion, from what I read about him, I guess some of the girls only talked about James Dean after his death, tragic death, um, in a way to, I don't know if they are speaking the truth or not, um, but it, it looks like a bit fame hunting, you know, they want to be famous because of his name. Some of the, the stories might be true, some of them, no, it, do, it doesn't look to be real or true. Um, some of the stories are mind-blowing, uh, they are crazy stories, and I, I choose not to believe them, because there aren't any proofs, and he was a passionate man, um, James Dean was a passionate man, a rebel at heart, with a sweet angel face, very, very talented actor, and just uh, an artist, you know, he was good at other things. He had, um, did you know James Dean's headstone, uh, where he's buried, and um, kept getting stolen by fans. Did you know that? Um, such is the appeal of Dean, even in death, that his resting place in Park Cemetery in his hometown of Fairmount, Indiana, has repeatedly been subject to death. Um, has been stolen a lot of times. Um, uh, in 1983... Someone took off with uh, Dean's tombstone. It was recovered and then stolen a second time that same year. It was persistent, the fan who stole. It remained missing until it was discovered behind a fire station in 1987. And the replacement marker was safe until 1998 and it disappeared again. An off-duty sheriff's de deputy found it after inadvertently running into it on a county road.
James Dean had appeared in a number of television shows before getting his big break in 1954 when he was chosen to play Carl Trask, the leading male role, in the film East of Eden, 1955, one of my favorite movies starring James Dean. This was only the one of Dean's films released before his death. That is what I'm talking about in just a while. For now, Rod Stewart, Young Tux. In 1955 movie, James Dean was signed to playing Jim Stark in Rebel Without a Cause. Still in 1955, the film for which Dean is best remembered, Rebel Without a Cause. Immediately following the filming for Rebel Without a Cause, Dean played the lead role in Giant 1956 with Liz Taylor. Both of these films were released only after Jane Dean's death. You know, James Dean loved raced cars. As Dean's movie career began to take off, James Dean also started to race cars. In March 1955, Dean raced in the Palm Springs Road Races, and in May of that year, he raced in the Minterfield Bakersfield Race and also the Santa Barbara Road Races. We all know James Dean liked to go fast, real fast. In September 1955, Dean replaced his white Porsche 356 Super Speedster with a new silver Porsche 550 Spider. Dean had the car specialized by having the number 130 painted on both in front and back. Also painted on the back of the car was, guess this, 
Little Bastard. Dean's nickname given to him by friend Bill Hickman, who was Dean's dialogue coach for the movie Giant. Well, this is hard for me to talk about the accident itself. Let me tell you something I learned from watching um, James Dean uh, documentaries. This is hard. It, it, it's like he predicted his own death. Listen to this. He went on a few days prior to his tragic accident that killed him eventually. Um, he went on to a TV show. I'm not reading this. I'm talking from my mind, from what I've learned from the documentaries and books I read about James Dean life. And what I've learned is that when he went on uh, to a TV show about safety driving, you know, uh, driving safely on the road for young Turks, like the song you just heard from Rod Stewart, you know, uh, young guys, young Turks, uh, uh, young boys driving their cars in a safe way, you know? He, he was uh, James Dean. I'm talking about James Dean, of course. He, um, he tried to create awareness to the young boys for driving safely, to not kill themselves and others while driving. What happened was, he said... Uh, this is the, the part I think this is... Uh, like the devil making his way to James Dean's death of some sort. You know, he, he said to the TV camera on that show, Hey guys, please drive safely. Don't kill me on the road while you're at it. Don't kill yourselves. Don't kill me. Don't kill others while you're driving on the road. Drive safely young boys and uh, on September 30th 1955 James Dean was driving his new Porsche 550 Spider a gorgeous car gorgeous car if you like cars it's a classic it's so beautiful car to an auto rally in Salinas California when the fatal tragic accident occurred originally planning to tow the Porsche to the rally Dean mysteriously I don't know he changed his mind at the last minute and decided to drive the Porsche instead I don't know what this is this is really mysterious he decided in the last minute to change his mind and drive himself in the Porsche, that beautiful Porsche. Dean and Rolf Wooderich, which is a strange name to say, Dean's mechanic rode in the Porsche. Following were photographer Sanford Roth and Bill Hickman, driving a four-station wagon that had the trailer for the spider attached. En route to Salinas, Dean was pulled over by police officers. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit nervous talking about his death. Near Bakersfield for speeding around 3.30 p.m. after being stopped James Dean and Wooderich uh, continued on their way. Two hours later, around 5.30 p.m., they were driving westbound on Highway 466, now called State Route 46, when a 1954 two-door pulled out in front of them. 23-year-old Donald turned up seat, the driver of the Ford two-door, had been traveling east on Highway 466 and was attempting to make a left turn onto Highway 41. 
Unfortunately, Turnipseed had already started to make his turn before he saw James Dean's Porsche traveling really quickly towards him. Without time to turn, the two cars smashed nearly head on. The injuries among the three involved in the crash varied greatly. Turnip seat only received minor injuries from the accident. Rolf would reach the passenger in the Porsche was lucky to be thrown from the Porsche, although he suffered serious head injuries and a broken leg. He survived the crash. James Dean, however, was killed in the accident. For our own deep sadness, James Dean was just 24 years old of age at the time of the wreck. The image of the car smashed is just heartbreaking. We all love James Dean. This podcast was about James Dean. You're listening to Billy Idol Rebel Yell because, let's face it, James Dean was the last rebel soul among us. Bye bye. Thank you.